Let, let's let's talk a little bit about Rome. I'm, I'm here for two days. I've, I've been here two days. Um, I'll, I'll tell you more about Rome, uh, or at least my experiences in Rome, as the week progresses. Uh, so far, uh, I haven't been here very long, so there's only so much I can tell you about my, my experiences this time. But I think we can generalize uh, to uh, to you know the, the 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 city that is Rome and the history that is Rome. This is my third or fourth time in Rome. Um, I, I, last time I was here, I think, was with my kids and my wife, so it's been a long time. Kids were, were, were relatively young. Um, and another time I, I was in Rome was uh, with an objectivist group, a conference that I was running. I think that must have been 1999 uh, with Mary Ann Suarez, the art historian, and, uh, and a bunch of objectivists. We did a, a conference in Milan. We did art tours guided by Mary Ann Suarez here in, uh, in Rome and then in, in Florence. So a really, a really amazing, amazing trip. But that was 99. Um, so I, I was with my kids in the 2000s. Uh, and um, yeah, I haven't been much to Rome. Rome is a, is a big city. It's a, it's a city of 4 million people. I, I, I gravitate towards the, uh, the more intimate, small, much more manageable uh, Florence, uh, Florence is, is uh, you, you know, it's just, a, it's just a, it's a beautiful place. It's, you can walk everywhere. You never have to take a taxi. Uh, everything is so manageable. Rome is a massive city. I mean, you're taking taxis all the time, uh, it, you know, and, and uh, just getting from place to place. And it's packed with, uh, with tourists. It's a lot of people out there in the streets. The, the nice thing is that a lot of the places uh, I go to, um, and not necessarily the places the, the tourists are massed outside of. So, um, so let me let's see. Well, we, let, let's let's start with just a little bit of a a, a broad history of Rome. Um, we're not going to get into any details, but just just in terms of in terms of gi giving everybody a, a sense of of the of the um, of the uh, city's history, because I think the city's history is so indicative. Of of, the, of Western civilization. This is such a core piece of Western civilization, at least up until a point. Uh, and um, and then I, I want to talk about the art, and I want to talk about the specific experiences here in Rome, um, and particularly the role of the church here in Rome, because I think one of the things that you 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 cannot avoid in Rome is the church. Of course, the Vatican is here, but I haven't been to the Vatican yet. I'm going to the Vatican on Monday, but uh, just there's churches. Everywhere, everywhere, every corner has several. Um, every major corner, and and there's something important there. Um, also, once you enter the churches, there's, there's a really, there's really a lot to learn from going into these churches and and observing. And and we'll also talk about again the artwork. But but let me just let me just a quick like back of the envelope like two minute right history of Rome. I think the most maybe the most fascinating thing about the history of Rome is its it kind of its population, the evolution of its population. I mean, Rome in the pre-Roman Empire was, was a small village. It, it became the capital of one of the greatest empires in all of human history, uh, certainly one of the largest empires of all of human history. At its peak in, um, in the second century AD, uh, Rome, is is supposed to have been somewhere between one to two million people. One to two million people. One to two million people. Uh, the largest city by far um, in um, in uh, Europe, Africa, um, Mediterranean area. I, I'm not sure about India and China whether there were cities that were larger, uh, but uh, certainly in what we call the West, um, it was by far and and certainly. I think Latin America or any other civilization, Rome was the largest city of antiquity. Uh, over a million people, uh, a, a bustling capital, a, a, a place from which uh, a, a, an empire was ruled. And if you look at a map of uh, the Roman Empire at its peak, I mean, it basically covered almost all of Europe, with the exception maybe of, of, um, uh, of Russia and some parts of, of Eastern Europe. Um, it, they did not rule Scandinavia. 
uh, but all of uh, all of Central Europe and up into England uh, didn't have Ireland and Scotland, but almost everything else, the, the Iberian Peninsula, and then all of Northern Africa, and and most of Middle East. That is, uh, but most of Middle East you want back then. I mean, they did not have Saudi Arabia, but who the hell wanted Saudi Arabia back then? Uh, before Saudi Arabia had oil, uh, before oil was a value, Saudi Arabia always had for oil. Uh, Saudi Arabia had no value. Uh, so um, uh, it, it's it, it was this it was this amazing empire, an empire built on open trade, an empire built on uh, religious tolerance, um, an empire that 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 allowed all the different sects and all the different religions and all the different nationalities to have some expression, as long as they stayed loyal to the empire, as long as they paid their taxes as long as they listened to their local rulers who were, who were ruled ultimately uh, by the Ra Roman Empire, uh, Emperor. So here we are at, at 200 CE, 280, uh, at between uh, 1 to uh, uh, 2 million people. By the middle of the Dark Ages, so what, four, five, six hundred years later, the population of Rome drops to 10,000 people, 10,000 people from a million to two million. I mean, I think that more than anything indicates kind of the fall and the, the, the significance of the Dark Ages. Now, why do people leave Rome? Because, uh, because trade breaks down, because uh, uh, industry breaks down, because civilization breaks down. Uh, you know, and, and, and uh, a city, a city is a sign of civilization. A city is a hub of trade. Cities survive when individuals don't have to be subsistence farmers. They can sustain themselves through specialization and trade. And when specialization and trade are gone because the civilizing force is gone, when, when uh, specialization and trade is gone, uh, because violence uh, rules uh, rules the world, viewed another way, when, when uh, you know when civilization is gone and anarchy rules the world, trade uh, disintegrates, specialization goes away, and people have to leave the cities and go back to farming. They either die, many many died of starvation, or they die um, uh, from wars or they go back from where they came. And we all came at the end from either small farming communities or hunter-gatherers. So they go back to small farming communities, they go back to the small villages, and they go back to cultivating the land, and they go back to barely surviving. Rome, uh, at, its, at its peak, not only had one to two, two million people, um, it had running water, it had a, an unbelievable system of aqueducts that moved water throughout the empire. Uh, but in addition to the aqueducts, they had pipes. They had pipes that brought water into uh, people's homes or into public um, wash facilities. You can see that if you go to Pompeii, you can see those um, uh, pipes. They literally had faucets. I mean, pipes that ran water with faucets, I don't think that existed again until the, the 19th century. All of that disappeared. It literally disappeared once the Roman Empire collapsed. The pipes disappeared. The aqueducts were destroyed. People didn't know how to use them. People didn't know what to do with them. The, 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 the faucets disappeared. You can imagine just, just the deterioration in hygiene that uh, resulted in that. I mean, there is a reason, in spite of the many, many people trying to rewrite history, the Dark Ages were dark. They were dark because in comparison to what had come before the Roman Empire, and in comparison to what came afterwards from the Renaissance on, they were dark. They were dark in terms of quality of life. They were dark in terms of hygiene, in terms of the way people lived, and in terms of the ability of people to, to specialize. They were dark in terms of the amount and quality of trade. They were dark in terms of the intellectual activity, the scientific uh, activity. They were dark politically in terms of the way people were ruled and governed. I'm going in and out of focus. I'm not sure why that happens. I need 
figure this out better. Um, it, it was a dark ages. Smelly? Yes, definitely smelly. Dark and smelly, Jennifer says, and she's absolutely right. Now, beyond that, um, you know, all real specialization, trade, makes it possible for wealth to be created. And, and wealth was created not on the scale of the 19th century or the 20th century, but on, on, on the scale of human existence up until that point, the Roman Empire created a lot of wealth. That wealth made it possible for some people to specialize in, uh, you know, being artists, in education, in, in, in all kinds of fields that did not, were not entailed in the direct production of the things that were necessary for you to survive it, you know, uh, on the spot. So uh, what you had was, uh, again, a, a descent into people being subsistent farmers, the disappearing of the disappearance, ah, what's going on with the picture, the disappearance of artists and uh, disappearance of artists um, uh, from the world, the, the, the number of artisans, the number of artists, the number of intellectuals, the number of, uh, of writers and poets and authors disappears. And of course you have a, th a much more authoritarian governance and therefore you have a lot less political dissent and, and uh, with less political dissent, um, you, you, again, you also have uh, fewer, you know, fewer people engaged in the kind of activities that lead uh, to political dissent. Let's, let's put on a light here, maybe that'll make a bit, a bit of a difference. Let's put it on this side. Hopefully that makes a difference. Um, all right. So, you know, in Rome, you really see this. In Rome, you see uh, the Roman Empire. I mean, you see the grandeur of it. We, we walked by, we didn't go into the Colosseum this time because I've been in the Colosseum before. But you walk by the Colosseum. I mean, what a spectacular building, the size of it the magnitude of it, and you think that this is something that was built 2,000 years ago, and, and that's just stunning. The reality is that nobody could build anything close to that, at least in the West, until well into the Renaissance. You go to the Pantheon, and the Pantheon has a dome on it that, that nobody knew how to recreate. Nobody knew how to recreate until uh, in the Renaissance, they finally figured it out with the Duomo in, um, in, in Florence. But they had no idea how the Romans built the Pantheon. They had no idea how the Colosseum were built. If you go to, if you go to, uh, 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 you know, some of the ancient ruins, what you see is multi-story buildings. There were no multi-story buildings in Europe in, until well into the Renaissance and, and later on. So in every dimension, you see this amazing civilization that had a lot of corruption and a lot of problems in it. But in terms of technology, in terms of wealth, in terms of specialization, in terms of trade, uh, wow. And in terms of construction, wow. I mean, they're just now, it, it, they're figuring out the secrets for the uh, uh, cement and the concrete that the Romans built because it is so long lasting. And they finally figured out the combination that the Romans used in order to to, to get that cement to work. Uh, but again, no multi-story buildings, no pipes, no aqueducts, no, all of that goes away. It just disappears. And it's hard to believe that once you reach a certain point of civilization, it can indeed just disappear. But this city is a testament to it. Any way you dig in this city, you know, they, they build a new building or something like that. Anytime they dig, they find Roman ruins because the fact is that the, the Roman city was massive was huge. What we see today is basically a modern Rome built on top of the ruins of, of ancient Rome. And, 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 and only some places where either the ruins were so large or they've excavated do we see the actual ancient Rome. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. 
show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.